Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Gopal Nilungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and everything else. You can check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. Head there, subscribe, and enjoy our weekly content. You can um, check out our podcast called Diving In with Funny and Jesse. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel, or our second YouTube channel for the visual. And we've got a Patreon account, you guys. You can feel free to become members and we'll appreciate. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing everything you guys are doing we're very very grateful thank you very much i hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed a big shout out to the person that suggested this they suggest i react to what is the holy spirit what does messiah mean and why does god use the pronoun we when is one very interesting questions so without wasting time let's get into the video Welcome back with the question and answer period. So we, um, our first viewer is asking to clarify the true meaning behind verse two, I mean, chapter two, uh, verse two, that says, indeed, those who believe in the Quran and those who are Jews and the Christians and the Sabians, anyone who believe in Allah on the last day and work righteousness shall have their reward with their Lord. On them, there shall be no fear and they shall not grieve. What is the true meaning behind that verse? Yeah, this, this verse uh, is a reference to the variety of, of believers that you can find. Uh, the, it says those who believe, and this is a reference uh, to the Muslim community. Uh, and then it mentions also alladhina hadu, those who have been Judaized, one um, Nasara, and, and the um, Nazarenes. Um, whoever, and then it says, whoever believes in God and the last day shall have no reason to, to grieve, nor shall no, any fear come upon them. Mm -hmm. and they will have their reward with their Lord. Okay. So the, 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 the verse becomes puzzling to many because uh, th there is an idea that if you're not Muslim, you automatically go to the unfortunate place, to, to hell, and that only Muslims will be saved. Mm -hmm. So if, if that's the belief, then how do we explain a passage like this? So we should explain it uh, in steps. First, we should realize that uh, th there are people who have not heard the message of Islam. So uh, and naturally, they will be judged by God, we believe, according to what message had already reached them whether it is the message of a previous religion or, uh, or not a message of any particular identifiable religion, just mm -hmm. simply the natural state of a human being who, who, who decides to worship God and choose him rather than to choose a path leading away from God. Okay. So people will be judged according to the knowledge and, and message that has uh, reached them. Okay. Uh, if, if the message of Islam has not been adequately and persuasively uh, delivered to them. Okay. Um, our next viewer is asking about the meaning God refers to the Holy Spirit in chapter 2 as well. What does that mean? Yeah, the, the Holy Spirit or the Ruh al um, uh, mentioned in the Quran, uh, it seems to be the angel Gabriel because elsewhere in Surah 16, for example, uh, God says that uh, the the Holy Spirit revealed the Quran to you, that is, the, to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. And in Surah 2, which you are just referring to, uh, there is a mention that is, it is the angel Gabriel who revealed the Quran to the heart of the Prophet Muhammad. Okay. So putting two and two together, it looks like in the Quran, the Holy Spirit is a reference to the angel Gabriel. Okay. Our next question is regarding um, Jesus, peace be upon him. And this, the viewer asks us, what is the meaning of the word Messiah that God refers to? And why does God choose that word? Why God chose that word, we don't know. Um, Muslim scholars try to uh, evaluate the word based on its uh, etymolo etymology in the Arabic language. So they thought it comes from Masaha, which means to touch. Uh, and they thought that this must refer to Jesus because he had this healing touch. He can touch someone and make them wholesome heal them from their 
uh, infirmities. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but looking at the term as a Hebrew term, there is a Hebrew term, Mashiach, uh, which uh, is, is anglicized as Messiah. And uh, that term has uh, a, a different sort of connotation. Uh, it means basically to be anointed, anointed. And, and this refers to the practice uh, when a, a, a person was put in the position of king uh, or judge of Israel, that person's head was anointed with oil as mm -hmm. a sign of his inauguration to office. Okay. And so he was known as the anointed one. Mm -hmm. Now there was an expectation that some special anointed one will eventually come. Uh, Christians believe that Jesus is that anointed one mm -hmm. and hence he deserves the title the Messiah. And uh, the, the Messiah is, is a, obviously, as we've said, Hebrew. Uh, the Greek equivalent of that is Christos, which uh, again, anglicized is just simply pronounced Christ. Mm -hmm. So when Christians say Jesus is the Christ, they're saying he is the Messiah. And it seems that when the Quran says he is Al-Masih, it's referring to the same thing, the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. Okay, the subsequent question that the viewer has is, if Jesus, peace be upon him, is like every other prophet, why does he get this special title? Um, this title, of course, comes to him from within that particular history in which he lived. Mm -hmm. There was an expectation of a special Messiah to come. And uh, when Jesus came, uh, Christians believed that he was that promised Messiah. And so he gets that title because of the, his specific placement within that history. There is an expectation and then he comes and he matches the expectation in the eyes of his followers. Our next question is also in reference to chapter 2, um, verse 34. And it says, um, it's, it's about a verse that says, We said to the angels, bow down to Adam. The, the viewer is asking, why does God use the pronoun we, plural, if God is one? Well, it seems that in the Quran, uh, when God wants to emphasize his oneness, uh, he, he does use the singular. I, um, I am God, for example. Inni an Allahu la ilaha illa anna fa'abudni wa akim salatu li dhikri. So it's all in the singular. I am God. There is no God but me. So establish prayer for my remembrance. Mm -hmm. um, but elsewhere, where God wants to emphasize his power or his majesty, his might, his, uh, the fact that he is the creator, he is the king of kings, the lord of lords, mm -hmm. uh, he uses the plural. So he says, nahnu khalaqnakum, we have created you. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, the question then is, uh, is uh, valid in that, it, why, why we when uh, God is singular? Well, it seems that we is used on, on such occasions when God wants to emphasize his majesty because there is in language a royal plural. Uh, there is a facility for uh, dignitaries to use such uh, high language mm -hmm. uh, to refer to themselves in, in such an unusual way. Uh, so kings might use the plural, we the king. It is noted that Queen Victoria up until recently used to say, we Victoria by grace of God queen. Mm -hmm. So if, if kings can use this language, then def definitely the king of kings uh, can use that too, just to emphasize his dignity and majesty. Okay. Um, our next viewer is asking about how many years ago did God create Adam? Is there a reference in the Quran or the Hadith? No, there, there is no reference in the, in the Quran at least. And, and in the Hadith, I'm not uh, aware of anything that is authentically reported from the Prophet, peace be upon him, that would give a, an actual date for the creation of Adam. Okay. Uh, we know by comparison that there are dates given elsewhere, but in the Quran, no, nothing. Okay, well, thank you very much. That's it for our show. You're welcome. And we will see you next week, but please remember to visit us at QuranSpeaks.com. Send us your questions, your comments, and your donations. Peace be upon you. This is very interesting. All I say, certain videos are for us to learn from. He's trying to explain the, the questions in the title, and it's really interesting. Um, I like the explanations for the other questions, but the one for where we have, where God uses we is a little bit confusing why use we if you are one and yeah, everything else that people need to worship you alone and nothing else i, f I feel like we may mis may may mislead people and misguide people because at the end of the day there's always that one person that wants to act like they know everything else and they're going to write maybe a book or their own type of spiritual scripture that 
holy scripture that's going to say we meant that god um rules with this person and that person it, it may be a little bit confused in other words i love the entire video and i hope you guys learned from it as i did make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video